I get questions about in-laws quite a bit. It seems a lot of people are having issues. What if I don't want my in-laws to watch my child? Or how do I get my in-laws to follow my parenting rules? But the question that I get the most is how do I deal with an overbearing mother-in-law? So in this video, I'm gonna give you some high-level, broad advice first. But you're gonna to wanna to stick around till the end of this video, cause I'm gonna get very specific on how you can deal with your mother-in-law. Hey guys, I'm Jason Kreidman and welcome to another episode of Dad University. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that notification bell so you know when our videos are uploaded. Also, it really helps us spread our message when you share these videos. So maybe you have three friends that might enjoy it. Please share it with them. So I have some general advice first. And this doesn't matter if it's your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your wife's sister, her brother, anybody on her side of the family. If there is a problem, you stay out of it. Let me repeat that because people may not understand that. It might not be clear. But if there is any sort of major problem on her side of the family, you stay out of it. I feel pretty strongly about this one. This, this was advice that my mother had given me many, many years ago. She was a best-selling author, seminar speaker on relationships, and an expert in communication. But she had some issues with my father's side and basically said, you don't go over family lines. Crossing that line is a no-no. And so I learned very early on that if something has to happen on the other side of the family, it is the responsibility of your significant other. If something bad was to happen, you could potentially not recover from that. Because here's the situation. With your own family, your blood family, unconditional love is usually treated a little bit differently. But when you get in an argument with a significant other's family, there is the possibility of no return. You discuss the issue with your partner and they are the ones that have to handle it. They have to discuss it with their mother. It's their responsibility to deal with that, not yours. If they are unable or unwilling to deal with it, then that's a different issue. And then you have to deal with that issue between you and them. If something happens with your parents, you need to handle it. So you handle the issues with your family and they handle the issues with theirs. It goes both ways. Okay, now we understand we're not going to get involved with the other side of the family. But when you have a child, it seems that we get more sensitive to people's advice or parenting suggestions or even other aspects of our life. We seem to be a little bit more sensitive to it. My mom used to say, what happens at grandma's house stays at grandma's house. And I gotta tell you, I didn't like that phrase at first. She had given my son candy one time and I was really upset about it because we were pretty clear that we weren't giving our son candy when he was very little. And she came over to me afterwards and said, you know what, Jason, if giving him a little bit of candy makes a memory and he enjoys himself, that little bit of candy is not even close to what the relationship and what I'm building with him is worth. And I, and I, I took that to heart and I really understood that, that I had to pick my battles. That you know what, my son having a little bit of candy and having a great time at grandma's house, maybe it wasn't that big of a deal. And so I was the one who had to get over that. Now that my mom has passed, just looking back at that and realizing how valuable it was, you know, whether it's a mother-in-law, it's your own parent, any of that, you have to pick your battles. And in some cases, you have to just take a step back and realize the bigger picture. And my mom was trying to create a relationship with her grandson. Whether it is our in-laws or our own parents, they may choose to do things a little bit differently than we do. Maybe your overbearing mother-in-law has an opinion on how the baby should dress or what kind of foods your baby should eat or how you hold the baby. It doesn't matter. They're going to have an opinion. Let's get to some of the specific tips on how to deal with an overbearing mother-in-law. Number one, it's a package deal. When you're committed to someone and then it includes a child, that also includes the parents, the siblings, the cousins, the aunts, all of them. It is a package deal. 
especially if they're close with their family, then for sure the package comes along. So you have to be prepared for that and keep that in perspective. Number two, be nice. Yes, I'm saying that you should smile and be nice. You don't have to have the perfect relationship with your mother-in-law, and you certainly don't need to fake a relationship if it isn't there, but you should be nice and respectful. Being nice doesn't harm anybody, and it's going to help you as well. So, in many instances, yes, you just bite your tongue and smile. Number three, set boundaries. Well, your partner needs to set those boundaries. You have the discussion with your partner, and then your partner goes and has that discussion with your mother-in-law. Does she need to call before she comes over? Is there a certain bedtime that needs to be followed? Are there other rituals or things that are really important to you that you want to make sure your mother-in-law follows? You can have all of those written down and set those boundaries. Just realize that they may not be followed but it's certainly up to your partner to have that conversation and then see what happens. Setting boundaries can often solve a lot of the issues. Setting boundaries means that you're having communication. Now, if your mother-in-law is someone that is willing to listen, then setting those boundaries will probably be okay and will work. If not, then you might have a different issue on your hands. Number four, don't take it personally. Now, I don't know your mother-in-law, but she could be a really unhappy woman. And if so, that's her problem, not yours. Maybe she's just really opinionated. She has an opinion about how you should do this with the baby, or how you should parent, or how you're doing something else. That's great, let her have an opinion. But that doesn't mean it needs to affect you, and you certainly don't need to take it personally. Number five, take it into consideration. When your mother-in-law has some advice that she feels is really good, she's got some great suggestions for you, a really good phrase to use is, we will take that into consideration. What it does is it shows that you're at least listening to what the person is saying and taking it in. Now, you don't have to use the advice and maybe you have no intention of using the advice. But when you say that you'll take it into consideration, you're being honest. You're taking that information in and you're at least listening. And sometimes that's enough for them to just back off. Number six, get to know her. And I mean really get to know her. Ask her questions about who she is and where she came from. This might give you a little bit better perspective of why she is the way that she is and how she might be completely different from you. Did she have a rough childhood? Did she grow up privileged? Maybe in the area of where she grew up. This will give you a little bit of insight as to why she is the way she is, if you're looking for an explanation. It might also give you a little bit of empathy that you didn't have before. You might be able to see things from her perspective. Number seven, take responsibility for your own actions. Now, I know this is revolutionary, but could you have had any part in the breakdown of the relationship? if it is broken, or in the way that you deal with each other and the dynamic between you? Is there any part of maybe how you had dealt with something in the past that maybe could have been dealt differently? Sometimes it's hard for us to look at ourselves and realize maybe we could have done something a little better. Maybe we could have been a little bit nicer. Maybe we could have been a little bit more inclusive to a situation. So take responsibility for your own actions and evaluate if there's something or some things that you can do to fix it. Number eight, stop having expectations. When you have a child, you may have the desire for your parents and in-laws to spend a lot of time with the child. But the reality is they may not call or they may not be interested in, in spending as much time as you would desire. So you have these expectations and in the end, you end up getting disappointed. So you have to stop having expectations and putting those expectations on other people. Maybe you had expectations of what kind of activities they should do or what kind of foods they should eat while they're with them. You have to stop having these expectations because you will be disappointed. Number nine, look at their intention. Instead of looking at what was said or what was done, Try to evaluate a situation based on what was their intention. In many cases, their intention was good. 
They love their grandchild. They love their child, your significant other. And so their intention was good. They may just go about doing it differently than you do or you, know, you don't agree with how something was done. But if the intention is good, that is a great way to evaluate the situation and take a different perspective. Understanding intention can help you in all kinds of situations. Maybe I should do a video just on intention. But when you learn to evaluate situations based on the intention, you don't take things personally, things don't bother you, and you realize that somebody might just do something in a different way than you, but their intention was still good. Their intention is still pure. And that is typically what matters. So those are some tips on how to deal with an overbearing mother-in-law. In most cases, it's just not worth the argument. You know, if you're holding resentment and anger and other negative feelings, just let them go. It's not worth it. You know, your child having a relationship with your in-laws or with your parents, it can be so valuable and wonderful. And when somebody is overbearing, oftentimes that is just something that we need to learn to process and we need to learn to deal with it. I recently did a video in which, you know, if things are bothering you, it's actually you. You're the one that needs to work on that. You can't change somebody else in most cases, although I gave you many tips of setting boundaries and talking with them and getting to know them. But in many cases, you can't change who somebody is. So you have to look at those positive aspects and the relationship that's being built. And, of course, their intention. I'd love to hear from you. Do you have an overbearing mother-in-law? Tell us some of the things that are so overbearing. Let's discuss them. Leave your feedback in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, you don't want to miss what we have for you in our other videos. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that notification bell. Also, share this video with your friends and family. We'll see you next week.